Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I make videos about hand sewing, hand quilting and English paper piecing. Anywhere that you can find me on the web is listed down in the description box, including my Instagram and TikTok account. And today's video, I am coming to you with a DIY. So I recently purchased this lamp from a charity shop. The shade is a bit wobbly, um, but it's just because it's one of those ones where you can angle the shade. It's just a really simple shade. Um, it is a little bit dirty and dusty, a few marks. So I have no qualms in DIY in this shade. And then I think it will totally transform the lamp in general and give it some really nice personality. And not so long ago from Alice Caroline, I bought several scrap bags of her strips. Now, some of the strips are really good width. Um, some of the strips are really good width and then some of them are not really fit for much sewing. I have been doing some small projects with it. Uh, these are ones that are cut up and ready to be sewn. But today I want to use the smaller strips that I probably can't really use for sewing. So all I'm thinking is just laying the strips over the lampshade. So let's begin. I'm going to select some and I think I need to iron them first. <laughs> So as you can see here, I've got lots of different colours and patterns of beautiful Liberty Tarn Lawn. I think this project works great with the thinner fabrics such as Tarn Lawn because it will really allow the light to penetrate through. But even when I show you at the end of this video what it looks like with the light turned on, it is still very bright. So I think thicker fabric will work, but obviously the bulb will be a little bit dimmer coming through, but it will still shine really nice and give a really lovely effect I think. So all I did was I lay the strips of fabric onto the lampshade and roughly measured with about half an inch to three quarters of an inch overlapping, maybe an inch, <laughs> overlapping either edge and then I just use that just to roughly cut out the rest of my strips and then I use this permanent spray adhesive that I got from Hobbycraft and it is advisable that you put down some type of covering over your mum's 35 year old antique wedding tablecloth. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> or spray outside in the garden or inside a cardboard box and then all I did because this stays tacky for quite a while I just lay lots of strips over the top I tried to conceal any of the like salvage edges or any edge that was too frayed I overlapped just by maybe two millimeters or a quarter of an inch or so and then I just trimmed down all the flaps so that they was roughly the same size because I'm going to cover these with another strip of fabric so you want them to be roughly the same size and this is where I used a hot glue gun so again make sure that you proceed with caution with this because obviously the hot glue and your fingers can get quite um, warm and also very sticky so just regularly clean off your fingers I was having some trouble with the fabric sticking to my fingers again so all I did was just press the edge over and it gave such a lovely effect and then I used a strip that was long enough and wide enough to cover all of my raw edges I didn't fold it in like bias binding style I just kept it as it is and with the hot glue I didn't put it too thick I'm sort of rubbing it on rather than doing blobs and I just put a strip at the bottom and the top of the piece of fabric I was worried that the hot glue if I applied it too thickly that it might shine through when um, you might be able to see it when I turn the light on but you can't at all so I don't think there's any need to worry. I just cut with a small overlap and did the same thing just applied some glue. You could do this with a glue that isn't hot glue but it would take longer for it to set and you'd probably have to hold it in place a, a little bit longer. So that's all of the raw edge concealed and I did the same on the top as well. If you didn't have long enough strips to do that you could perhaps use maybe one inch ribbon and that will do the same trick as well. 
I just reapplied the lampshade back on and there we go that is the finished product I just love it I love all the colors and all of the patterns so there we go guys um I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm now off down to the supermarket to see if I can buy just one bulb that fits this. It's one of these small Edison screw caps so they are quite common. Um, I will be putting in a lamp that isn't, um, that doesn't heat up so it'll be an LED bulb just so then it doesn't interfere with the glue or anything like that because obviously hot glue will melt again under heat so you want it to be a heatless bulb if you can. But I think that is just the perfect injection of colour and personality into my living room. I'll put a little clip at the end with it turned on so that you can see how it looks in the light. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. And do leave me a comment letting me know if you're going to try this project. Bye.